Hi, I'm Madonna Guy and this is The Natural Alternative. Welcome. As you know, I've been a lifeblood analyst for about 17, 18 years now and there is weird stuff in people's blood. So I just thought I'd show you a couple of my uh, samples from my clients over the last few weeks. Things are sort of really ramping up. It's not just the graphene oxide we were seeing a year ago. There's all sorts of delights going on in our blood these days. And then I'm going to share, share, share. Then I'm going to share the complete interview with Maria Z, David Nixon and Carl C. This is from early May, but it shows a lot of the changes going on in people's blood. Enjoy. So now I'm going to share the Maria C interview with Dr. David Nixon and Carl C. Enjoy. The last time that we had Dr. David Nixon and researcher Carl C. on with us, they showed us extremely alarming findings that suggested that human cells may be in the process of being replaced by synthetic biology. Well, their most recent findings confirm our fears. They join us after this short break to expose what they're seeing under the microscope now. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. The New World Order has openly declared war on the free people of the world, and now they're telling us to expect catastrophic cyber attacks over the next two years. Weather events, no power, grids down, mobile cell services out. Contact your loved ones anywhere, anytime with the satellite phone store. The Bivy is a revolutionary GPS-based device which allows you to send SMS messages via your phone even if you have no mobile or cell service. Galileo will ensure you always stay in contact with Z Media, other trusted information sources and your loved ones that can update you in real time in the event of an emergency. Don't be caught out and unprepared for the unprecedented times we are living in. Stay 10 steps ahead through secure, encrypted communication. Visit sat123.com forward slash Maria and prepare yourself and your loved ones now. Dr. David Nixon and Carl C., thank you so much for joining us again today. Lovely to see you again, Maria. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's great to have you both on. The last time we spoke, uh, you were showing us very alarming things that were starting to appear in the urine of people, uh, and I believe that now we have uh, even more to discuss today. You've both obviously been looking into the effects of the nanotechnology into the human body. Uh, before we get into your presentation, do you want to give us a summary? Yes, I think there's three things we really want to talk about today. The first one is what we believe to be synthetic red blood cells that we're seeing in the blood, particularly in the last couple of weeks. Second thing we want to talk about is the structures that we're seeing inside the blood cells um, and on the blood cells and some detail around that. And the third thing we want to show you is what we're calling microfluidic structures. Um, and that's al almost as bordering as the ro robot arms. So, uh, so I'm sure you'll find that interesting. I absolutely mm. will, particularly because just recently Zoom Media released the report of Ido Bachelet of Barilan University partnering with Pfizer in 2015. And, you know, in 2013, he did this presentation about these nanorobots um, and how they can actually be directed remotely. I mean, even back then with what he calls like a joystick or an Xbox controller to interact with each other. And in that expose, I included our previous interview with the robotic arms, Dr. Nixon, because that that is it, it looked exactly like what you were showing us then it, it that seems to be what ido bachelet was describing interesting yes it certainly you know it seems to be likely that what we're looking at is technology that, that's not widely recognized yeah and we're yeah. seeing seeing some correlations now between david's chips uh the injectables uh, the, the swab tests, COVID-19 swab tests, um, and the materials being produced in certain cells within the blood. And, and a lot of that seems to involve 
colloidal type nanotechnologies um, based on colloidal molecules, colloidal cells and things like that. So yeah, the, inevitably there is new, new words and new jargon associated with this. So um, we've been banding this around for a little while. So forgive us if it's all new. Please remind us if, if things are new. Yeah, of course. I mean, there's there's a lot of new terminology that people are becoming accustomed to. So many still don't understand or know even uh, that synthetic biology exists. So, I mean, this is a, a whole new world for people. But thankfully, our audience is aware and sharing the information. So let's get into your presentation so that people can see what you found. Well, so uh, here is uh, what we've been seeing lately which has become quite the trend, um, is alterations to the blood cells. Uh, with my Laker microscope, um, an industrial imager, we can actually see the colours um, and details quite, quite sharply in the blood cells. Um, we can see the membrane has been altered. It's really quite thick. Um, you know, it's, it's entirely different to a normal blood cell structure. Um, and the variation in the materials are quite interesting there seems to be about several types of uh, material being produced at this stage um, we've got the smaller colored molecules um, in some of the cells uh, image four on the right um, and we've got you know sort of blue much smaller particles and um, debris which kind of match up with what looks like in literature as a proteinosome um, images one and two one shows you what looks like an echinocyte, which is obviously the blood cell with the nodules. It looks like it has the big lumps attached to it. And, you know, we, we're told this is an echinocyte in the past. Um, but image two was taken over now, and we actually have a video of that, which we'll put up on Substack. Um, and it shows the transition of the material attached to the cell, then sort of merging and folding out into um a different cell structure which as I say you see in image two um before this cell then starts to thicken its its membrane uh, and become one of these artificial cells the only thing we've managed to see that actually would resemble anything like this at all is the dod's uh, department of defense's erythema um and david and i have both been made aware of all of the money and uh, research they've put into over the years with different contractors on how to make not only powdered blood for emergencies, um, you know, an emergency blood transfusion, but for altering your blood cells in situ. So, right. you know, making some kind of bio warfare that can create bioreactors, um, you know, drug delivery, uh, make nanomaterials, basically turn your cell into a manufacturing uh, facility for other processes that might be controlled within your blood. So we don't understand exactly what these things are, what they're doing. We just know that they're not bacterial. They're not fungal. They vary too much. Um, and it's now started to become the norm. Right. So can I just ask, uh, is, is this predominantly seen in red blood cells that we're seeing that rouleau formation in, or is it independent of, of, of blood cells that are experiencing that? Right. And interestingly, you should bring up the rouleau. So we're seeing a lot less of that now than we were previously. Right. Uh, so this is happening in generally um, isolated areas on the slide, and it's happening to all the, all the cells in that area uh, are becoming, uh, are starting to look like this, and there's evidence of structures inside the cell. So on my microscope, I don't see the colour, but I do see the shapes. Well, I, um, I, I wonder, and, and let me know if I'm jumping ahead here, but I wonder, are we seeing the whatever's, you know, whatever these synthetic things inside the blood cells, are we seeing interaction between them and frequencies like we did with, you know, some of the chips? I certainly don't think we can categorically say that we've seen that. Okay. That aware of that relationship okay although it's likely that there is a relationship that exists we just yeah. can't see it 
Correct. past being energized um, and, and all cells needing energy as your own human cells do. Um, yeah, we, we couldn't really tell. And of course, these are quite different structures and maybe a different pathway of technology to what the crystal chips are. So we can see that there are varying processes and structures. So it would make sense that there were uh, multiple products being made in a human body. And we'll show you some more about that in a bit. But sure. this, is, this is quite easy to see, you know. So so anybody with a reasonable microscope can get a dark field condenser for a few hundred dollars and they'll be able to achieve pictures that demonstrate this. Okay. So it's not so it's not it's not something that should be hidden, it's something that should be out in the open. Um and it's tangible evidence that there's tampering going on. So this is a relatively normal video of my blood from 12 months ago, and we can see variation in size and shape of the red blood cells. And, and there's not a lot of particles in the plasma there, and unfortunately, my blood doesn't look like that anymore. So over the last couple of weeks, I've seen examples in different people of red cells that look like this. Um, and these are clearly two identical. <laughs> they all look the same size in the same shape, shape, and they're all reflecting light in the same way. Yeah, this is an unusual pattern. I said to David, I was familiar with using uh, polarized light microscopy with special filters um, on both ends, which you normally use for metallurgy and stuff. Um, but they use it with colloids um, and other materials, and they give off this crisscross light pattern um, with the four breaks. And suddenly, David's not actually using polarized uh, filters. And I'm like, how are you seeing this? And I'm like, that, that makes it look like synthetic cells. Um, so it's quite interesting. Um, is this, uh, th theorizing here, is this potentially a result of the directed evolution that they so want to achieve, improving, you know, is this their version of improving the human body? Well, um, that would certainly be a reasonable conjecture. <laughs> yeah. I think most of us say, what is it? If, it, if it was for our benefit and if it was really that good, then they would have told us about it. Oh, absolutely. I just wonder whether, you know, this is this is evidence of their ex, uh, experimentation of perfecting the human body and, I, you know. I certainly, I certainly think it is, and I think we need to get very angry that this is happening. And again, this is very easy to see. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've seen this in two or three people. Two of them were unjabbed. They hadn't received the COVID-19 vaccination. And as we've discussed previously, it's impossible to tell by looking at the blood who's actually received a vaccination and who hasn't just because our environment is currently so contaminated. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. Sure. Yeah, and essentially the, those other cells that we just saw with all the details in there, that, that technology is a control technology because if it's able to, if it is that and it's, you know, able to release drugs um, and other you know quite intricate molecules and materials then somehow that has to be controlled somebody's controlling that so that's a bit worrying well let me tell you bar Ilan university in israel certainly said they can control it remotely but they they admitted to the fact that uh humans get hooked up to the internet with with these nano robots um and that there are 1000 billion robots per droplet inside uh inside an injection inside what they call a vaccine uh and uh and they they certainly said that that they they ensure that they can't that they don't lose control over these nano robots or nano materials because they hook them up to the internet and so it's absolutely um, true, according to uh, the people that Pfizer partnered with, that that is the case. Uh, my concern, Carl and Dr. Nixon, is that it's not actually uh, someone controlling it, but it's actually already AI, but that's a separate topic altogether. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah.
so I just put those two photos of Forrest there just mm -hmm. to just as a metaphor for what we're seeing so yes. some things can be too identical and too perfect so um most most of the viewers will be familiar with the strange structures that I found in the Pfizer commonality vaccine uh injectable <laughs> so I just illustrate those again there now and uh we'll come on to why I brought those up again um and this was just an amazing example of this the technology so this was probably second only to the ro robot arms in terms of trying to get your head around what we're actually seeing this fiber implanting itself um into the into the structure so these are examples of uh more crystal strange crystal structures that we've seen recently and we now have a better idea of what we're seeing and i'll get Carl to speak to that so yeah i've been um getting david or letting david look at some of his some older samples which he showed you know this quite some time ago um review those on my scope and some of the newer ones he's been doing um the imager i have is is way more sensitive to to light is more balanced in the color range uh, and so with certain settings on it and stuff it actually pulls out details that david couldn't see before quite mm -hmm. quite the same and what what's going on is is that we're seeing huge clusters of aggregating nanoparticles and colloidal molecules is what we believe they are um, which are a little bit larger than nanoparticles um, and they'll end up being put into some kind of substrate which appears to then form as a crystal now it's very hard to focus in on these structures because the light is all over the place with standard optics so getting that just right and spending a lot of time tuning it up is critical to being able to see these details uh, and when you do you realize that david was definitely onto a winner um doing all that crystal work and uh, we can quite clearly see that the molecules which are not actually molecules as in a particle but a technology based on the um, uh, composition of nanoparticles molecules chemicals and maybe even dna rna um I'm going to zoom this up since David showed me how to use that button. <laughs> um, but we can see this is a slightly less developed crystal. We can see that the, the compartments that show up as clear on David's microscope are actually very colorful and very detailed. And we do see um, occasionally small wire-like thin blue structures uh, appearing between these compartments. Um, it's good to remind ourselves that we don't need cables for electronics. Chemicals can be electronics um so how that works i wouldn't want to comment just yet and i'm not not saying these are definitely um electronic components but they do seem very much that they have that intricacy going on um and the development of these crystals is just really mind-boggling it's fantastic we've seen so many and these are these were very very tiny um and they were taken with a 40 times oil immersion lens which is quite expensive and is highly unusual you don't see 40 times oil immersion lens very often. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we can see these details. They're in there. Um, this image is a bit compressed, so you can't really see as much as you normally would, but it's there. Um, very intriguing. So the, rele the, the relevance at this point is, is we want to just show that there seems to be uh, a huge load of pathways um, exhibiting the morphologies and the uh, methods that you would see for employing colloidal materials. Yeah. <laughs> so the, these are the urine photos or a couple yes. of examples that you've seen previously, just to illustrate how these particles or colloidal molecules, which are the larger version, line up and how they organize themselves. And certainly there's quite a lot written in the literature which we've discovered since we showed you these pictures which describe uh, the different types of bond between the different structures um, which will certainly um, contribute to the to the patterns. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because we we didn't know what to call them before when we were on the show with you. So yes. we called them Dreamweavers. Um, <laughs> um, but it, but it's interesting because we knew that there was something really odd about how these things would, you know, well, just do this. It's amazing. Yes. Um, and since since then, we've we've now found out that colloidal uh, molecules can not only um, position themselves in the line through very complex and unique bonds. So each each of those um, molecules could have a different job, different programming, uh, like a building block. Um, but they can expand and they can create cells. So these are expanded uh, colloids, it would appear, from what we're understanding in the literature so far. So all of this stuff is starting to come together quite nicely when we look at our P. <laughs> so what, and, and, and what role do colloidal molecules play as far as the transhumanists are concerned in controlling the human being? Because that's that's a, a key to the understanding, I, I suppose, why why yeah. they would choose that. So so nanoparticles and quantum dots were the big topic in the beginning as we as everybody was learning. Yes. Um and those can be, you know, pretty useful in terms of uh building program structures, drug delivery you know, um, you know, customizing a form of bio biowarfare and stuff like that. But colloidal molecules, um, they're more complex. These these aren't a symbol, a single um metal particle that's then doped with layers uh and then has a limited amount of abilities. A colloidal molecule can be slowly formed from again more selective bonds and smaller particles, chemicals and everything else. Um, even DNA can get in there uh, as an instructor. Uh, and you basically have now uh, a, a work office or a teamwork work office, construction office in, in that small particle. So the complexity, abilities and pathways have been increased over that of a nanoparticle. So it, it fits the bill quite well. And as soon as we started to realize it started to fit a lot of these papers, um, that it would seem like it was the superior choice for these kinds of technologies. Right. I will uh I will read more into it. So um this is uh, just a bit of a collage showing e this is this is like an, a slightly earlier stage of the blood cells breaking down and we can clearly see that there's these really quite colorful beads and clusters. So colloidal molecules can also present as clusters instead of being an individual small fluorescing uh particle if you like like a nanoparticle but just a bit larger um i think they're four four to five five times larger depending on how they're designed um but you you can see that they're in there we can see the colors very clearly on a very high end scope you won't see it on a you know mid-end scope or a typical lba live blood analysis scope but you do have to have a good image on that but you can also see that in some of the cell structures which are not bubbles um that there's also the expression of what would seem to be colloidal molecules um, and these are expanding into varying cell structures these are the cell forms here that have expanded and we can watch them doing this material can be produced with inside of those um, and the colors vary greatly even in a form where they look like they contain liquids because the chemistry is likely different in each of those and we'll show you show you why that might be very shortly it looks reptilian. <laughs> oh, well. it, it doesn't that. look right. <laughs> well, thank, thanks. I'll take that as a compliment because this one's my blood. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, Carl. That's all right, Maria. You're hot too. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so the, yeah, this is just a, you know, not photoshopped, not CGI'd. This is really happening. And we had a Zoom this morning. With a whole bunch of other you know lba types and naturopaths and now they're all seeing the same thing it's becoming the trend and they can't see it quite as well um but they can they certainly can see that it's the same thing i've yeah. never seen blood look like that in my life right well if you were to look at your own blood um with the type of equipment that we've got access to at the moment you'd see this uh, you know, but, but I, I I'm saying post COVID, uh, pre COVID. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, I don't think you would do. Maybe some members of the public that might have been previously experimented on, possibly 
wink yeah. wink um so yeah here's just another quick video just showing you that clearly the some of these things are blue the materials are all extremely different so don't confuse yourself into thinking that these are parasites or something simple some of the motions of these things once they start to become more refined they'll be rolling like barrels and there'll be other stuff that has multiple stuff in the cell and some of them are attached to almost attached by some form of bonds and they're rotating like machinery and another part will be doing something else these these are all highly bizarre um and complex designs so um yeah and there's something to be said about these stringy things that might have looked a little bit like Lyme disease spirochetes um but uh, we'll probably go into that another time because th they're different colors um we're seeing them a lot in a lot of different people's bloods um and they're quite reflective and unnatural looking aren't they yeah I think the key thing is they they um, appear to be synthetic and trying to find some other non-synthetic um answer answer is yeah is uh not, not what we should be doing so you know take took us a long long time and and many of the lbas were like are these bubbles now always on my sample um but we got way past that now um we've been examining these for a very very long time done lots of different forms of microscopy staining uh or d using dyes and more you know watching the morphology and, and we're now starting to see patterns as the blood's getting worse and these are quite consistent between everybody's blood that we look at and it may take 10 minutes to do it it may take 30 minutes um but pretty much you'll see it if you keep watching the blood and it happen quite rapidly um and it triggers off you will see at the edges some some relation to op oxygen or air being able to get in at the edge of the slide that helps to trigger it um but suddenly you'll start to see what looks like gels or hydrogels Mm -hmm. um in, in membrane confined areas starting to seep out um and maybe there are differences between the different membranes I'm not entirely sure uh but once they trigger off they'll start moving quite rapidly and these membranes are very thick they're almost very polymer like um and, and plasticky um and here we can see this is quite consistent now it creates these very bright rings which we've nicknamed for now um ring constructors um because we have very close up uh video of these uh in 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 different things water uh drinks um blood and they're clearly producing things from the membrane um to the inside of the structure um and laying out various things like cells colloidal molecules it seems that they're able to produce something that looks like colloidal molecules um and, and we've seen interactions with blood on these membranes it looks like they draw material from their surroundings selective selectively like any cell would uh, number four down here is one example of the kind of almost hydrogel like nets with nanoparticles and other materials that seem to uh, stretch out from these cells uh, and this is quite a regular occurrence um, you know and we can see that there's other material confined within that cell that will just get more dense and continue to form number five here is uh this is 40 times oil immersion this is now you know this is all over everybody's blood this is just one form of the cell um oh sorry i screwed that up david that's okay um i'm i'm saying that's four... okay on dr nixon's behalf thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you um i've already deleted I'll, the first I'll presentation <laughs> i'll talk to him later damn mm -hmm. it so yeah here we can actually see so you know originally we would see the smaller particle form um which would be the light blue dotty structures and I, I think that there has been there might be a 5g wireless interaction that may be commands uh, molecular pathways to change because you can do that with wireless frequencies is how we create reactive species uh, reactive oxygen species in water and all kinds of stuff you know you do it with frequency you alter molecules mm -hmm. um so i don't know that has something to do it, but we would see these the most wouldn't we the small dots and then they got larger and then we noticed it more in the blood everybody did um but here you can see how the nature of colloidal materials exposes itself because they start to expand um and there are many structures that form like this and you'll come back to them and they'll have just created a very dense pile of um 
material, which we'll see in one of the next slides. So if you can hold the control and we'll zoom back out. Again. Thank you, sir. Uh, one of the things that we're seeing is the, oh, is, mm, sorry, these structures here, which look a bit like, um, well, I'll explain that in a minute when you see it. But anyway, we can see the alignment of these, these molecules again, complex molecules. Um, and we can see that the, the ones that have aligned and matured appropriately um, have attached themselves to the expanded colloids, which, which have now become like a colloidal cell, which is translatable to a, a vessel. So like a cooking vessel, you could see that, or a react, reaction vessel. Um, and you're going to love the video we show you in a bit, because then you can see this well-organized a factory or possibly liquid computing device um, in action. There you go. So ju just just for anyone who's doubting, we use stains and dyes like uh, toluidine blue, which is uh, again non. Um, it's that word I'm forgetting again. I did this before. Non-specific. Non-specific. Mm -hmm. um, so they they will they will stain and dye many things within with within their contact. Um, and show them up in varying colours. I think the importance of this is we've tried to say, oh, they're just air bubbles, or we're just yeah. seeing what's yeah. on the bottom of the slide, and clearly that's not the case. Right. Yeah. So that's the important message with that. Yeah. In every one of these cell structures, some of them can be quite bare at first, but it doesn't take long. Um, some of them will come out of the blood already with clear clear indications that they're not bubbles. Um, and here we can see that the toluidine has possibly dyed uh, purple for RNA um, and some small bits of blue, which would indicate DNA. Um, but it is an indicator. It's not that's not anything set in stone. You, you just use it as a possibility. And then there's all this other material. So we can see it's actually creating stuff, as we said, from the membrane. And we can watch it doing this in real time. Um, and it's quite fast when you think about how fast mm. it's creating stuff. So here is a blow up showing you one of the ring members. This, this is actually at this point, not a smaller ring. This is a very large wavy um, cell. cell that's moving that might look like what we've been calling hydrogel, starting to cover the, the entire sample, the slide. And as it's doing so, it's drawing blood cells into it, into the membrane. And the membrane is an interesting thing because if you change the light, you can see uh, that there are multiple components to this membrane. And sometimes there are like two tubules running alongside each other with stuff happening inside. But it's it, you see these pop up quite clearly. And again, we've only got so much time. So we'll show videos and stuff like that on the Substack. Um, and there's, a, there's so much work we've done, we just can't get it all up there in time. Um, but this is spitting out large cells. It's spitting out um, smaller cells. So it appears to be taking the material from the red cell and making all the stuff. And I'd say probably stuff that we don't see in the solution or possibly even hydrogels in the plasma um, that that it could use as, you know, construction or building blocks. But, you know, we're still learning this stuff. We just know that we see it. We've seen papers that match and tie up. So to clarify, see. it's taking natural materials to sort of power itself to to be able to yeah your your own cells what do they do they metabolize things they're designed mm -hmm. selectively each one of your cells um is designed selectively and it will take do you want this it will take um it will take uh you know whichever chemicals and stuff it wants to create reactions with within that cell to build that recipe for right. what you need um and this is the technology they've mastered and they mastered it years ago it, it's the what's the, again the video called it's called the or, or oh, of life like, mm. Mm. and basically they show you in there we understand how human cells work we can use them as factories to produce anything all we have to do is replicate um, a situation where that particular cell that's produced has a selective membrane um, responds to light or heat or whatever it needs to do in order to catalyze uh you know the the output of other materials and chemicals. So a lot of this technology is based on that. I'm just got aware of the limited time we've got, Maria. Yes. I'd quite like to go to those the key videos that we've got. Yep, sure. Oh, so I'll flick, flick through these. People can pause them. They've seen them. 
So I'll flick through. I'll flick through to it, and then people can pause it. There we go. That's quite interesting. There are wires that attach to these cells, and they attach to the blood cells. So, um, it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah this is actually important. Yeah, ground. Oh, just quickly, we can see that with the dyes that the cells, the cell structures are changing. And that's indicated by the dyes. Yeah. So the importance of this one is just the differences in the cell membrane. You know, it's obviously got different colors there. And yes. The just different materials inside the membrane. Right. So this is the, this is the punchline, if you like. This is what these things do when they get going. So when you first when Carl first showed me this, I thought it was just bubbles popping. But when you watch it, you realize that there's repetitive behavior going on here. And the same things are happening. Same bubbles are filling up and going down and filling up and going down. It, uh, there's one in the bottom left there that it, it looks like it's dripping into another one. I mean, it's, yeah, down they here. Are. What? They are. So, you know, this is not an accidental structure. It's quite complex. Um, you'll see in the other video that some of them have got very specific um, coloration difference between them all. This should indicate to you that the, the contents of the cell, maybe the cell structure itself is different. Um, yet clearly these are well attached and we see that stuff can be transferred from each uh, vessel to another vessel. Um, this 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 definitely indicates the use of microfluidics and microfluidics can be used to you know manufacture things from other materials that might be absorbing into say this membrane along with stuff that's selectively coming into it um, and you can create you know recreate life recreate cellular uh, productivity and you can recreate manufacturing of a programmed type so um, question, also, does anything like this process exist in, naturally in the body? I, th I think there are some, but not in this way. No, they're, they're simpler. Um, you know, your body does this in between cell membranes and layers and, and in very, various other, other ways, but they seem to be much simpler from what I can find. Um, you shouldn't really just find a microfluidic system forming in your blood and we have to answer before. that is no <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but um yeah it's interesting so these these are quite shocking to watch and we see these now quite often in many different um samples we can even see there's particles bouncing around in in these structures um but they've certainly gotten worse and they've developed more as time's gone by and everything else in the blood has gotten worse so um and we can actually see that these are involved with the colloidal molecules so there's another clue you know um the, 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 does, the, does, the, does the, the blood ever bubble like that naturally in any for any reason no no do we know so, why it's happening as, as i say the only thing we can assert at the moment what our research shows us is this this could be something that's able to produce them more materials complex in, materials complex, in the body yeah. yeah and another another stage another cell structure might use the material that this produces because they need those chemicals for this process on the other hand David and I found papers talking about using similar systems as liquid computing so you could make a liquid computer chip um and maybe there's some kind of relation between the microchips we've been finding in this but one of them's not the correct state but we seem to think they're both built from colloidal molecules so we're not we're not really sure but there's something in there maybe we'll find out eventually um yeah well I'll, I'll certainly I mean you know all of the research that I've done today pointed to hydrogel uh that being programmable matter um are, are you saying it's not or there is a relationship between all of them well there's definitely hydrogel involved yeah so so it doesn't matter what form of whether you use colloidal molecules whether you use nan simple nanoparticles whether you're trying to build synthetic cells and deliver them hydrogel is your man hydrogel is your cargo container yeah um with the constructors in it okay so see hydrogel as a constructor 
or multiple constructors, which is why you might add multiple arms to increase yeah. the, the uh, complexity. So maybe four different hydrogels and then things unpack from that hydrogel. So uh, hydrogel still stands and we've done a lot of dyeing and staining of products, blood, various other things. And they are showing positive for things like uh, alginate calcium ions um, and hydrogel, possibly chitosan or chitosan. Um, and we've, there's a few other candidates that we're exploring. I think the key thing is that they certainly see hydrogel as the bridge between biology and technology. Yes. Um, so, so this is um, probably quite a good video to end on. Um, and um, this is actually taken from a relative's blood and it's using three different stains to give the different colours. It's possible that one of the stains has produced those green crystals that you see there. Well, of course, is they're this, just bubbles. Is, mm. Well, hang on. Is this is this uh, the video on loop or is this um, the blood doing this repeatedly? No, this is the blood doing this. So I have yeah. to reset this one, but I have looped other samples that we've got. Um, Why? But, yeah. Why is it doing that? <laughs> um, yeah, microfluidics, baby. Um, so, hang on, we go. Okay, why is it being a pain in the butt? There we go. Um, and we'll start that again. So, I'll zoom into another part for you. Um, these these are all uniquely designed. These are all these are all obviously doing different things. We can see they're different. We're not children. Mm. <laughs> you know, we can see the difference between things and that's that's basic science. So, you know, if these things are not equal and they're not doing something simple, then they're not simple. So unlike the, the first video, this one is actually sped up. But and it looks like it's looped, but it's not. Yeah. Um and the the motion on here is like a metronome. You know, it's, it's crazy. It makes sense. If you're making a chemical composition and you want that to come out, then everyone puts in two cups of flour, uh, three, you know, uh, cups of water, et cetera. So that it would make sense as timing. I don't need your cake, man. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> it's all right. It's safe and effective. That, that doesn't sound like a good cooking lesson to it, me. It's safe and effective, I swear. Oh. All healthy, natural, good for you, grass-fed cake um so this is this has come uh, my observation is that it's come such a a long way the blood has changed so much since the original uh versions that we saw of the blood uh the original samples uh, do, is it your belief that it's evolving if you will yeah definitely absolutely um or deteriorating might be a bit well another. I agree with you on that, but it, and and would it be um, m my question? I guess, and perhaps you can't answer this, but would it be from what was originally introduced in the body, or do you think that it's a compounding thing? My my question is: Do you think that if someone is exposed to say a COVID injection, that without any further external factors, without any geoengineering, without eating meat that has this sort of stuff in it, that it can evolve to this stage? Or do you think that the compounding effect is required? I think I think it will happen faster if you consume more of the materials. Yes. Um, but it, yeah. it would it's seem quite definitely a compounding effect. It's ongoing contamination there, I think, is the main problem. Yeah. So we this is an example of the sort of material in water. So listeners will be aware, aware about the discussions around geoengineering. So they're clearly conducting the over our water supplies. Um, so this material is getting into our water and into our food. Yeah, these are the same constructive cells and these are the colloidal molecules. We took pool water samples from an outdoor pool and we've taken quite a few tap water samples from different areas. I've done them in the UK as well. And the, these cell structures will all start to make connective strands with each other. You'll then see cells starting to appear with inside of them. And, and to the unsuspecting person, they might look like bubbles, but they're not. 
Um, and so these things are trying to make life forms, uh, synthetic they're, they're life forms. Basically, they are unpacking nanotechnology. So, yes. you know, they're trying to make alter your biology is what we understand. Yes. And maybe even implement devices that will co-inhabit with your biology. Yes. That's how we see it at the moment. But yeah, when we use RO water, which is what we're advising people to do, change your fills every two months. But what we're seeing is the water's so clean, we can use it for our samples. And we don't what? see this in our own. What water is it? reverse osmosis seems yeah. to be the best way of removing this material from drinking water and we certainly encourage everybody to look at that option you know watching this over the past few years and watching the difference of what we're seeing under the microscope in terms of the human body and the changes to the human body for anyone who's been tracking it this whole time it's undeniable that something is very very wrong um and you know i i'm i'm of the same opinion that i was from day one which is that we need more people looking at this we definitely need those in the sort of traditional medical community if you will even those that have woken up to the to the big pharma problem uh to come together with those who understand that we really have moved to this era of synthetic biology again i bring up ido bachelet who all the way back in 2013 bragged about being able to do this now of course uh the original discussion was about curing say cancer in someone uh, and being able to package these 1000 billion robots into one drop so that they can be you know remotely controlled by bar Ilan to go and kill your cancer cells but imagine that in the hands of people that want us dead and people that are dead set serious about merging us with technology linking us to the internet of everything gentlemen uh we're out of time today but we we i think uh, you know you've given me homework um uh, on the colloidal molecules and how this all interacts with the internet of things and the internet of everything um i find the synchronization fascinating particularly in light of cern's white rabbit uh, and them sort of sinking because they did this during the eclipse in order to sink the internet of everything in, and make sure that their quantum computing isn't affected by external factors such as an eclipse or magnetic shifts in the earth. Um, and so I think that they are very much serious about, uh, you know, I, I, what I'm saying is I think that they're fine tuning this internet of everything with the humans that are now contaminated with this stuff um it looks like there's a fine-tuning process going on because CERN already say that financial institutions are connected to White Rabbit telcos are connected to White Rabbit and they were just fine-tuning during the eclipse uh and so uh, you know I, I think there are things that are going on that are way beyond a lot of people's understanding but certainly both of you uh have assisted in waking people up to that so very briefly I want to bring up Carl's uh, uh, um, substack for everyone. It is man against the machine um, dot substack. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> but you're against Need the machine coffee. too, though, right? Yep. We are against the machine. If I didn't know when it was all machines in the beginning, it would have been man against the machines, Terminator <laughs> style. <laughs> Um, we, we definitely need to speak again very soon, gentlemen. I mean, these, these are amazing findings. Um, but uh, this is Carl's Substack. Carl sees Substack. Blood reaches new catastrophic levels of alteration. DOD, uh, you can pronounce that for me, Carl, like tech in full swing. Ariframa. <laughs> and we also have Dr. Nixon's Substack, which I encourage everyone to sign up to. Uh, you can go to substack.com forward slash at David Nixon. Uh, so please sign up to both of those Substacks and keep on top of what is going on humanity. We need answers. We need more people onto this, but I'm appreciative of both of you. Thank you so much for your research. Thanks, Ray. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. We'll talk soon.